My favorite time of the year has arrived. The red deer rut is around the corner here in Spain, late September. And I wanted to go through a few things that I have in, in my head when hunting red stacks. And this video, I'm not gonna try to show you guys how to make the specific sounds because there's a big difference from the Spanish red stacks to the Central European red stacks, which are way heavier in mass. So, and they make way deeper sounds, but I think there are some concepts that we should have in mind and I will try to go through them. Mainly, what we have to have in mind is we need to analyze the different situations to see what will be the best approach to get that red stack. First of all, if we see a red stack that is roaring or even if it's not roaring and we have a possible stock, I wouldn't even bother to try to call that red stack. I mean, I will just try to put a stock, quiet, keep silent, because it's very risky. Every time we make a call, we are showing ourselves to everyone. So if we don't make it properly, what we are gonna be screaming is like, I'm here and I'm a hunter. So the more quiet that we can be, the more successful we are gonna be. But if for whatever reason, uh, we lose sight of the animal and we don't know where it is, or if it's on a very difficult spot that we cannot access, into shooting range, then we may have to use the call. The first scenario will be that I know where the red stack is, more or less, I have just lost sight of it, and there is a possible stock. I don't need him to move. So I just wanna confirm its location. So what I will do is just release a positioning sound, just to get a reply from that stack and to locate exactly where it is to make the next move. If the stack is on an area that I cannot access, then I will have to bring that stack to me. And the main thing will be to know if the stack is alone or if it's with females. The reaction will be completely different. If the stack is with females and he, he's looking after those females, no matter what I do, that stack is not gonna leave those females. He wants to be with those females. So in that case, I will need to get as close as I can and challenge that red stack. Try to show that red stack that I'm a threat and that I may steal the females from him. So I'm gonna get as close as possible and make sounds like I'm stealing females, that I'm chasing females around and that red stack is gonna get nervous. He's gonna think someone's stealing my cows and he's gonna show himself to try to protect those cows. If the red stack is by its own, he's looking for females. So I'm gonna try to make a sound that it's showing that I'm a, a red stack, I'm a male, and I have my females around to try to attract that male to go check my, my females. Or at the same time, to, to make female sounds <laughs> to get that stag in. So let's go through a, a few examples on a different scenarios. So I'm, I get into a valley, I don't know if there is any red stags around, I will just release a position call and say like, I'm here and try to get a reply from other red stacks. I'm letting everyone in the valley know that I'm there. If I see a red stack with the females, he's very chasing around those females, getting in contact, I will try to get right inside its comfort zone and challenge him with a roar or a grunt. So it will be more something like... So that's a red stack challenging that red stack. Or at the same time, if I see that he goes a little bit away, I will make like, if I'm chasing some of their females away, more like. <laughs> so that's that sound of, of a bull chasing cows around. That probably gets that bull nervous and he will come protect that, that herd. And the same, the same way if there is a red stack far in the distance that it's alone, it's looking for females, I will make that same sound of a bull getting his, his herd together. There are a few things that we need to have in mind when calling. First of all, don't feel embarrassed for calling. Like we, we, when you go for it, you need to go 100% for it and just try to do it as best as, as you can. Second, I don't like calling from the same spot always because the stacks have an incredible sense of locating where that sounds come from and he will become he will come looking for that. So w whenever you can, I'll try to make a call from here, move 20, 30 meters away, make another call. Maybe if I'm, I cannot move, make one call this way, turn around, 
make another call looking backwards to try to get that, that stack confused. And also, I like to call when the stack is moving for the same reason. When the stack is moving, he's making noises with the, with the feet, he's making noises with the trees, moving around, so he's not gonna be as precise locating that sound as if he's just stationary looking towards us. The main thing will be to get and feel like you are a red stack. So don't feel scared of breaking some branches, of grabbing a tree and rubbing against a tree. Like is, if it's a red stack marking the territory. I mean, the animals, when they get close, they get very excited, they get very aggressive, and a red stack will make branches, grab a tree, grab branches, throw some calls, combine everything to try to make it as real as possible. Regarding calls, there is 100 different types from really fancy ones to this is just a pipe. The main thing is that you need something to expand that voice. I like these ones that extend them, themselves so you can regulate a little bit and change a little bit the sounds, but it's a personal preference. Hope this gives you a few tips for this rat. Can't wait to see your guys' success and please give us any comments and any thoughts and any feedback. We'd love to hear from that. Good luck.